That's not perfect, but it's pretty good. 9 sixteenths ID by 3 quarter OD by 5,000 stick. Hello, I'm Joe, and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome to the shop. I have an old Toss Trenson lathe. This is a Czechoslovakian unit, 18-inch uh, swing, 60-inch on the bed. Uh, pretty heavy uh, lathe and a pretty good one. Uh, I've got a project coming up uh, on which I want to use this lathe. And I have a couple of little projects, a, a minor repair and a minor uh, improvement or modification uh, on the cross slide that I want to make uh, before I start this next job. So let's go take a look at it. Here's the lathe. There's another three feet of it sticking off behind the toolbox on the right. So as I say, pretty fair size. Uh, let's get up close to the, to the uh, cross slide. The repair I want to make involves the retaining screw for the hand wheel. Uh, this was missing when I got the lathe. Uh, I've never uh, gotten around to fixing it before now. Uh, so I have found a, a, a six millimeter by one socket head cap screw and a flat washer that'll hold this on. Some lathes have a, a double threaded arrangement here and an adjuster nut that's uh, run in just snug and a set screw in the middle of that to tighten it up but this has uh, just the one uh, fastener uh, when I put that in though it's just a little too tight and the hand wheel drags uh, it doesn't lock up quite solidly but there's enough of a drag to to make it difficult to uh, achieve a smooth motion with it I found in my stuff a nylon washer, uh, the right size, that's 9 sixteenths ID, 3 quarter OD, uh, but it's 32 thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, it's a little bit too much, it lets the handle rock back and forth a little bit. I didn't like that. So you just saw me make this uh, brass washer. Uh, it, Im, imperfect but adequate for uh, for this job. It's not perfectly concentric, but it's not bad. So I'm going to try this. I think that'll. I think five thousandths will be plenty to give enough clearance and uh, won't be so much as to let the handle flop around. So we'll try that on there and see what happens.
That's perfect. I think probably this original screw was missing because it had to be left a little loose to keep the handle from binding up and uh, eventually just unscrewed and fell out uh, before I got the lathe. Uh, so that's good there. I like that. That'll work fine. The That's the repair. The modification I want to make, I want back here, I want to tap and drill for a lock screw to bear against the gib and I'd like to be able to lock it down there because under a heavy cut this has a tendency to, uh, to unwind and, and back off. So I want to just put a lock on here that I can uh, activate with a probably with an Allen head, uh, Allen wrench. So I need to take this back off and uh, see about getting that slide cross slide off because I don't want to drill in here. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't really be able to drill in here and and get a clean hole all the way to the gib. I have to take it apart and also I would. I've never had it off and I'd like to make sure everything's clean and, and in good condition in there. So I'm going to start backing things out again. My other lathe has a locking screw about here that uh, runs down into the uh, cross slide nut. And if you remove that, you can slide it off without having to do any further disassembly. But on this one, uh, this front casting, there's a split right across here. That has to come off. I can see one retaining screw here, and I'm sure there's another one back here, so I have to get this dial apart. It seemed a bit dark there, so I've added some light. I got three screws here to remove, and the Face. I'm not quite sure where the parting line is. Something's going to come off of here, and that should give me access to a set screw behind. I'm going to get an impact driver, and I hope I can run this thing right-handed. I'm left-handed. If I get try to get at it uh, with my left hand. I will uh, be right in the way, so I'm going to see how close to ambidextrous I can be. That got it. Try again. That's going to fight me. I love those impact drivers. Alright, there's the cover off. That looks pretty good in there, nicely lubricated. Let's go after these Allen fasteners in here. Need a little stronger tool. Oh, I can't quite reach into that one. Let's try the impact driver again with a metric Allen socket. Oh, that was tight.
Well, let's see if I can get this out of here without anything going sprung. There we go. Get that out of the way. I can see what's going on here. There's threads here. There's a double nutted uh, collar arrangement here. Uh, takes pin spanners to uh, operate them. And the end play is set with those locking collars. Uh, fortunately, I don't have to dig any further into that. That, that the end play is very good. So I can leave that as is. Mr. Pete would accuse somebody of putting air to this. I'm going to go ahead and take the gib out so that I can get this loose and get it apart easily in preparation for a thorough cleaning. Gib screws are identical, so I don't need to worry about keeping track of them. And I'm thinking the thin end of the gib is to the rear. So I'm going to give a little tap on that. And here she comes. What I want to do is put a fastener in here that will bear directly on the outside surface of the gib to hold uh, uh, to, to lock the carriage in place, or uh, the cross light, I should say. At least that's what I'm hoping to do. Not terribly dirty under there, but a lot dirtier than I care. To have it. I can see oil holes here matching up with the uh, used to be apparently there used to be uh, ball oilers in here somebody's replaced them with with uh, cap screws Well, I can't get at the gib the way I wanted to, I don't think, with my uh, set screw idea, locking screw. I'll have to look at that a little more closely, uh, see what happens there. In the meantime, I'm going to get all this stuff cleaned up, and you're not interested in watching that. On close examination, I see that this area right in here between this oil hole and where it starts flaring up 
to the tool post mount, this area never comes off of the ground uh, and scraped surface below. It, it stays within. Uh, th this never comes off and travel this direction. This never comes off and travel that direction. So if I drill a hole in here, say perhaps uh, across here, and in the middle of this full dimension cast area right here perhaps a 3 8 inch or 8 millimeter hole all the way through I, I can put in a, a fully threaded cap screw that I can get out from the top that will bear underneath on a machined but unground surface. This this area in here is is machined, but it's just relief. This is there's clearance between the top of the uh, uh, the the swivel base and the bottom of the slide uh, and there's no uh, machined feet there, there's there's no ground or scraped features in here uh, that I will interfere with so I could uh, uh, grind that screw or machine that screw dead flat on the bottom so it bears against this surface and I can use that for a lock screw uh, without interfering with any other function without interfering with oiling uh, and, and without uh, uh, marring a, a, a scraped surface. So I'm going to take this over to the milling machine after making a couple of more measurements and I'm going to put a hole right here. This video is going to be running a little long if we keep going. Let's break this off here and pick up in a part two. I hope you'll comment. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll come back and visit the shop again. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. The reason a dog has so many friends is he wags his tail instead of his tongue. <laughs>